Here we are in the final of three episodes about sentence completions. This one is pick the best match, but let's recap where we've been. First off, look for clues. Second, capture the concept. And third, pick the best match, which we're going to go into great depth on in this episode. But just to give you context, because you definitely need to remember parts one and two, here's where we've been. In look for clues, we said you need to look for clues in the sentence. So there are words and phrases. We talked in the past about the banker versus the doctor, smiled versus frowned, and how that changed the meaning of what you would expect in the blank. You also need to look for direction words, some of which tell you the sentence continues in the same direction, like so or because. Others tell you the sentence goes in a different direction, like although or despite. And lastly, we said to watch out for punctuation, especially semicolons and colons. After look for clues, we looked at capturing the concept. Two basic ideas there. You have to capture the concept that goes in the blank and the word that you use, or in fact the words if you want to use a phrase, don't have to be poetic. They don't have to be a big old SAT word. They can be awkward. They can even be made up. As long as you know the idea of the concept that goes in that blank, you're good. And with that in mind, we're ready to talk about the third part, picking the best match. When you do pick the best match, here are the concepts you're going to use. First of all, you're going to eliminate clear mismatches among the answer choices. You're also going to use roots and other associations you might have to narrow the field after you've made the uh, clear mismatches go away. And lastly, you keep in mind, if you can eliminate one or better yet more answer choices, you should always be sure to guess. Now let's look at this applied to a whole bunch of practice SAT problems. So here's our first of many examples that we're going to practice these ideas with. Now remember, we have to still go through the first two steps, looking for clues and capturing the concept that goes in the blank. So let's do that, and then we'll move on to step three, picking the best match with the ideas in mind that I just mentioned. So first off, looking for clues. Though Kayla insists she can fix her bad habits, her friends and family consider her blank. So let's see, some clues are fix her bad habits, and then we also have the word though. That suggests there's a contrast. So though Kayla thinks she can fix her bad habits, her friends and family consider her... So you need to make a prediction now. You need to capture the concept. And it's okay if it's not pretty or a single word. So here's a goofy word that captures the concept pretty well. Unfixable. Not saying it's the right answer, but it definitely has the flavor of the right answer we're going to find. You could also write something like beyond help, and that could be the concept that you're going for. With that out of the way, you move on to picking the best match among the answer choices. Use this as your guide. First up, we're going to look for clear mismatches so we can eliminate them. So we say unfixable. Does unfixable mean facile? I'm guessing you don't, mean, you don't know what facile means, so we'll skip that one and move down the list. Does unfixable mean incorrigible? Also a hard word, so we'll keep moving. Catastrophic. Catastrophic means really bad or disastrous. Now, that might feel okay, but it doesn't mean unfixable. So we'll get rid of that. It doesn't match. Predictable. Does predictable mean unfixable? Also not a match, so it's out. And then benign, maybe you don't know that, so we'll leave it in for there. Now I want to point out that both catastrophic and predictable might actually kind of, kind of make sense in the sentence, but